As we celebrate the 400th anniversary of the first Thanksgiving, it is perhaps worth re-examining the famous group of passengers who now have over 30 million descendants. Their story is well known. They were a group of religious separatists and fortune seekers, known as saints and strangers, looking for better lives in the new world. After numerous delays in departure and an inability to cross the polyp rip off of Chatham, Massachusetts, the Pilgrims decided to settle in Plymouth. In truth, though, these were just the beginnings of their problems. Of the 102 people that constituted the Mayflower passengers, 52 of them would not live until the first Thanksgiving. In fact, five of them did not even make it off the ship. William Button, a manservant of Samuel Fuller, died first, somewhere between November 6th and 16th of 1620. He was 15 at the time, and was among the demographic that would normally be considered at least risk of dying. His death, seemingly random, does raise the interesting question. Which group of passengers was least likely to die? A logical time frame to use is from the time the Mayflower last left England to the first Thanksgiving. That period sees the pilgrims struggle through the brutal first winter in the New World, where so many of them die. Therefore, let's consider making it to the first Thanksgiving to be survival for the purposes of this survey. We must also make sure that we have a full data set. While it is convenient for trivia competitions to say that there were 102 pilgrims, two children were born on the Mayflower, Oceanus Hopkins and Peregrine White. This makes the total 104 pilgrims, of which exactly half survived our time frame. Two families survived completely unscathed. The first is the Hopkins family, whose six family members and two manservants all lived. All four Billingtons also lived, but they bear the distinction of being the only family not to have a sick day over the winter of 1620 to 1621. The Brewster family lost one of its wards, Mary Moore. Other families were completely wiped out. The Martin family lost everyone, as did the Tinkers. Meanwhile, the Mullins and Tilly families were reduced to one biological member, Priscilla Mullins and Elizabeth Tilly, respectively. The fact that both survivors were girls should not be overlooked, as gender certainly did play a role in survival. It is an often cited fact that only four married women survived the first winter. They were Susanna White, Ellen Billington, Elizabeth Hopkins, and Mary Brewster. That's an astonishingly terrible survival rate of four out of 18. Adult men weren't much better off, though. Men who came by themselves, or as the only adult in the group, tended to be younger, but only 9 out of 20 survived. Survival, then, might have come down to class. Among the pilgrims were 14 indentured servants, some of whom had become servants simply to pay for this voyage. Being a servant was a bit of a high-risk, high-reward occupation in terms of survival. Only 6 out of 14 survived, but those who did survive did extremely well for themselves. John Howland, for instance, was an indentured servant until his master John Carver died, leaving him a much wealthier man. Wards were in a similar situation, and four out of seven of them also survived. What really determined your survival, however, was your age. Children under 10 were very vulnerable to disease and the harsh winter cold, and thereby incurred a high death rate of 43%. Adults over 50 all died except for William Brewster, giving that group an 80% death rate. Adults between 20 and 50 were also surprisingly vulnerable. With only 24 out of 57 surviving, that group did the majority of the dying. That leaves the best group, teenagers, or as I've defined it for this video, anyone who would turn 13 by the first Thanksgiving. That group has 20 members, of which 16 were able to survive. It gets even better for teenage girls, of which all six survived. The group is an interesting microcosm of the Mayflower passengers. Among them is Dorothy, a maidservant of John Carver, whose last name has been lost to history. How often it is in history that there are people so close to great events about whom little is known. Other members of this group include some of the most famous pilgrims today. Elizabeth Tilly, who today has millions of descendants, was the only survivor of her immediate family before she married John Howland. Constance Hopkins is also in this group, and she is famous today in part through the children's book Constance by Patricia Clapp. Constance is at the intersection of several ideal demographics for survival. She's not a servant or ward, and she came with a family. Even better, she came with the Hopkins family, who had no members die. She's also the right age, 14, and being a girl is a member of a demographic that saw no deaths. Here we have found our answer. If you want to survive the Mayflower, all you have to do is be Constance Hopkins.